On the first day of the independent, which was the 7th of October 1986, I was stuck down at Bour in Bournemouth on the south coast of England covering the Conservative Party conference. I had a small team with me, uh, a darkroom, young darkroom lad who was going to process my film. Film. Funny, isn't it, when you say film, how nostalgic you can be about it. Anyway, um, my job, uh, and, and, um, and, 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 and no great pressure on me, was to produce the front page picture of the first edition of the first broadsheet national daily newspaper to be launched in the UK in over 100 years. Yeah, I was pretty nervous. So, um, the Tory conference, and um, I, I, I've always enjoyed covering political conferences and um, slightly uh, poking the politicians with a visual sharp stick. Uh, and uh, the Tories got it as much as uh, Lib Dems and Labour and anybody else. But the Tories this year, it was the second year... Uh, only two years after um, the IRA had bombed um, uh, the Tories Hotel in Brighton, uh, killing several people, and therefore security was pretty tight. And the general feeling was that the, the, the first picture on the first day should be something to do with security. There were boats off the coast, there were minesweepers, there were probably destroyers and frigates, I'm not even sure we didn't have an aircraft carrier out there somewhere. But on the roof of the hotel where Thatcher and her entire cabinet were, um, were staying, which was just uh, next door to the Bournemouth International Conference Centre, there were police with guns. Now, here we are in 2016, many, many years later, 30 years later, policemen with guns, actually quite common occurrence, uh, even in small, small towns up and down the country, and certainly in most of Europe. But at the time, to see a policeman with a gun, a high-velocity rifle, or a machine gun, or even a sidearm, was pretty unusual. Um, and I noticed that on the roof of the hotel, uh, there were police crawling around underneath the parapets. And I thought, well, they're going to have to come above the parapet sooner or later. And I had a huge telephoto lens, a 600 millimeter telephoto lens, which is about the size of a bazooka and a couple of converters which made it into a 1200 millimeter telephoto lens on a huge tripod probably about half a mile away from the conference center and i just sat there on the parapet of uh, the sea wall and waited and after an hour or so uh, a policeman came up and he looked like an extra out of a clint eastwood type of dirty harry film and i thought fantastic that'll do me nicely and i clicked away um and then uh, I noticed behind there were two other policemen and they were actually right over the other side of the rooftops handing rifles to each other. I mean, it really was a film set. You couldn't have designed it better. I suppose this was what, oh, late morning, lunchtime. Uh, I, no I noticed there was a photographer from the Daily Telegraph who was hovering around me trying to replicate every picture that I was taken. And then about 50 yards from me was another photographer from the Times who was also trying to photograph everything that I was taking. But they didn't have the huge telephoto lens that I had. Um, and therefore, I wasn't actually that concerned. I was pretty nervous about processing the film and transmitting the film using uh, early computer transmission technology. So I asked the darkroom lad um, to, to take the film back to London on the train. And they got it back to London and published it. It was on the front page. It was the wrong picture, but I got the front page. The picture they used was the Dirty Harry Man, which was nice and simple. The picture they should have used was the two, two policemen handing rifles to each other over the rooftops. But, you know, um, some you win, some you lose, and you just go with the flow, and tomorrow's another day. And the great thing about National Daily Newspapers is if you mess up on one day, you try and get it better the next day.